Hello and welcome to another video. This is part 5 of our Actix web series. Uh, in this video, we will be continuing our authentication. So we did JWT authentication and we had the claims, but we didn't really use them. So in this video, we will be taking a look at how to send those claims from our middleware to any of the handlers and then use that claim data to, let's say, get the user's information or update the user information. Okay, so to send the claim data, first we need to get to our uh, middleware and add the claim inside our request. So this is where we uh, decoded the JWT. We have the claim. Now we'll do request extension and then we'll insert the claim. And that's pretty much all for our middleware. It won't work right now. It will require a trait. But first, let's uh, clear up the rest of the code, then we'll add the trait. To use it, we can just go to any of the functions that has the authentication applied before it. And then uh, we can just add a parameter claim data claims, and then we should be able to use it. Let's do user model, entity, user entity, and then uh, find by ID. We'll pass on the claim data dot ID. So we get the ID and we have our user. Now let's do rest of the stuff. Give the database connection and do some error handling. Okay, so we need to change the return type. Let's make this a result API response API response. Wrap our return statement inside OK and this should be good. Okay, now we are getting the model inside a user model. Uh, let's change this return. Uh, let's uh, format a string with name and email. And this will be the name and email of the current user. Okay, now you can see we are getting an error and this is claims need a trade for from request. So let's do that. So we'll go to our JWT. We have our claim structure here. We'll add a trade from request for claims. Now implement this uh, trade. Here for error, we'll do actix web error. And for future, we'll do future ready. And the type of ready will be result self and self error. So self is claim and self error is the type we just defined for error. Now let's go to from request method and we'll do the same thing. We'll do std future uh, ready and then we'll pass on the type of ready, which is our result claim and actix web error. Uh, now this method will return a match uh, and for the condition of the match we'll have our request extension and we'll get the claim if the claim exists then we'll do future ready okay and then we'll return the claim
and if it is none then again we'll do futurity but we'll return error this time so we'll do actix web error and uh, let's say we'll do bad request we are getting an error for the claim okay so we'll do dot clone uh, it does not have clone okay so we need to add clone and yes all the errors are gone and inside our handler uh, here also all the errors are gone uh, let's do one more thing let's also create a method to update the user so we'll do a post request and this request will be for updating the user so we'll just copy the same parameters and we'll have to add one uh, so let's create a structure update user uh, we don't really have a lot of information for the user so we'll just update the name we can have uh, a similar function for updating password or let's say any other detail of the user okay now let's add this structure for the type of json that will be coming in our request the return type will be result api response api response First, let's return something so that it does not give an error uh, for improper returns. So we'll just return user updated. We also need to add serialize and deserialize. Okay, now uh, let's first fetch the user and then update it. So to get the user first, we'll have a mutable user model and then uh, we'll do entity user entity find by ID and inside find by ID, we can do claim data dot ID because we have our ID in our claims. Next, we'll do one and we'll pass our uh, database connection await it and then uh, just do the error handling and we have the model inside our user model now we can't really update a user model uh, we need an active model so at the end we'll add one more method uh, which is into active model now we have our active model inside our user model variable I will do user model dot name and we'll set it to the name that is coming in our request. Finally, we just need to update this. So we'll do user model dot update. Uh, you won't get the update method sometimes directly or the intelligence might not work properly so just add it it will give us an error we'll add the trait later so right now you can see uh, it shows this uh, use crm active model trait we need to add this so we'll add this at the top and we should be good then Okay, now our update method is not showing any errors, which means it's good. Uh, we'll await this and again, we'll do error handling. Now our uh, user update method is also ready. So let's just run this and uh, fire up postman and test it.
first we'll log in and then we'll take the token and put it in our bearer token Uh, let's go to our user request set it to authorization to inherit uh, from the parent okay so we can see here we have our name and email uh, we also have an update request but uh, i think we forgot to add that in our uh, uh, routes so that won't work so let's go back and add that in our routes Now let's just rerun this and test our update route as well. So we are getting the user information and it's test one in the name right now. Uh, we'll make update request. We'll pass treasure as our name and then we'll send. We are getting user updated. Now let's uh, again change back to our get request. Let's send. And here you can see we are getting treasure in the name, which means our uh, user information has been updated. So that's all for this video. If this was helpful, do consider giving us a thumbs up and do subscribe.